All right, we're working on a 2003 Chevy 1500. It's a Silverado with a 5.3, and it's got a PO300 uh, code. That's the only thing that's shown, which is like a random misfire code. So I'm gonna show you what I did to diagnose what was wrong with this. Okay, before we get started, I thought I would just mention a couple things about safety on this. Remember that on these models, this is about 55 to 60 some odd pounds of uh, fuel pressure on this. So be real careful on this side over here. Right here is a little Schrader valve that you can bleed off the pressure. So get something, catch that fuel. You don't want fuel uh, all over the top of your engine. All right, so I've already taken this side apart. Uh, the injectors were plugged. Here's what they look like. So I cleaned them and put them back in. This truck was just barely would idle when I started, and now it will sit and idle. I know though for a fact that I've got a couple more plugged injectors on this side. So we're gonna take it down on this side and I'll try to show you what those plugged injectors look like. And then like I said, also how I came to that conclusion. Okay, with the PO300 code, guys, this it could be a lot of different things. So you work your way through it. You know, you want to make sure you got fuel. You want to make sure you got spark. You want to make sure your air is good. If you have those three things, usually your engine will run. The other thing, though, is you want to check your exhaust. Um, make sure you don't have a plugged up catalytic converter. That was what I started to do when I found what was wrong with this particular one. So I started with my heat gun. I got underneath and started checking each side. So I checked before and after the catalytic converter. It's a little bit snowy and cold, so I'm not gonna climb under there. Um, so take your heat gun, get right on the exhaust pipe, shoot it, see what it is. What I found was that this entire bank uh, on the passenger side was almost cold. So then I came back up with my heat gun, went down in here right on the exhaust manifold and just shot each one of them and like that and work my way right across all of them. Let's see if I can get in there for you. And then I, what I found was is this, this front plug was the only one that had any heat. The rest of them were very cold. So I did the same thing on the other side, came over with my heat gun. Again, just kind of got my heat gun in there, shot right on the, let's see if I can make it so you can see. So I just took, kind of put my laser right on each part of the exhaust manifold as I worked my way and saw the other ones that were running cold. So that led me to something, uh, I was getting either no spark or no fuel. So then I checked the spark. I had good spark in all the cylinders. And next thing I did then was start to look for fuel issues. Okay, so I drained my fuel. I keep uh, just some little containers like that around. There's how much fuel I drained out of it. And that took the pressure mostly off the rail. So now I'm gonna take this, cause I don't wanna really undo any of these fuel lines. So I'm just gonna take this little bracket that holds these in. I'll put a little bit of spray down in there to lubricate the uh, O-rings and then pop that up. Okay, so I took out the little bolt that holds the fuel lines and I should be able to pick these up a little bit. Just kind of go nice and easy because we don't want to ruin anything. I'll get those out of the way. There we go. So there was just a pinch of pressure left, but now that fuel is all disconnected from this fuel rail. So I'll take a couple bolts off. I've already sprayed. Hopefully you can see down in there. I sprayed all the injectors. So hopefully those O-rings, I got a little bit of uh, lube on them and so we can pull it all out as one unit. Okay, so here I've got the rail out and you know, really from this side, you're not going to see a whole lot, although they don't look super clean, but let's go ahead. This was the one that was showing that it was cold. Um, actually this one, and I believe that was number one. So I will, let's yank this one and take okay. a look. Right there, you can see into it, there is like some sludgy goo. That's what I'm gonna call it, is sludgy goo in that injector. I'll blow it out and then I'll see if I can get you back in on the shot and see how it looks. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see the injector there on the right. It's kind of real black down on the inside. The injector on the left was the one with the goo in it. I sprayed that out, it's still got gunk down in it. So these are plugged. 
Um, they didn't come clean with a little bit of brake parts cleaner blasting in there. Um, and maybe if I had an ultrasonic cleaner, I could clean them up. But the cost of these is pretty low. I'm going to put a link in the description for injectors and for the uh, manifold pressure regulator. Um, and so that's the things that are going to get this motor back up and running. And so take your time, look at your different systems, and just go through them one by one. The old uh, heat gun. It really came in handy on this particular one because that's really where it, it got me looking because that P that PO 300 code is so generic um, it could be lots of different stuff so if you've got that one this might be something that'll help you get yours fixed I hope so um, if you got something throw it in the comments thanks